Hi, my name's Hugh, and in this video we're going to show you how to replace the valve head in the SRI GC. So the valves are located in this little box here. We call it a, a valve oven. And this particular GC has two valves in the valve oven. We make the GC with two different kinds of valves. They're, they're very similar looking. These are called 10-port gas sampling valves and there's 10 pieces of tubing connected to the 10 holes. And we make the connections really many different ways depending on what we're trying to do. So there's always a little map on the top of the valve oven box that shows how the tubes are connected to the valve head. So once in a while, typically these things last forever, but once in a while something goes wrong, like one of the common things that goes wrong is that some kind of salt solution, like a buffer solution, is inadvertently introduced and then the, the salt crystals dry and then become abrasive and they, as the valve turns it kind of grinds itself to death from the, 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 the deposited salt crystals. So once in a while it's necessary to replace this valve head. So this video we're just going to talk about how to do that. This GC over here is very similar, except it has this slightly larger valve head. This one is called a Valco valve, and this one is called an AFP valve, right? They're basically almost identical, but two different companies make them. So the, um, the thing about the valve head is there's two different ways to remove it. But before we do, we always want to make a, a precaution, and that is we want to mark the tubes so that when we reassemble, there's no confusion about which tube goes where, right? So there's many methods. You could use tape and write little messages on the tape, but the, what I do is I take a, a Sharpie and I put a single little slash on port number one. Notice the, the, ports, the ports are labeled with numbers. That says port number 10, and that says port number 9, and that's port number 8, etc. So, so what I do is, it, on port number 2, I put two little magic marker slashes, and then on port number 3, I put three, and so forth and so on, all the way up to port number 10. So to actually remove the valve head, you really have to remove the tubes that are connected to the valve. Now, I don't really want to have to remove all these tubes, but... I'm going to remove one just so you can see that you have to take a wrench. This is a one quarter inch wrench and you unscrew it. And then if you're lucky, you can get your fingers in and unscrew the nut all the way. And then you can pull the tube out just as easy as that. And then when you later put it back in, you have to be careful that you you, you feel that you found the thread because you don't want to cross thread this, right? You don't want to have the, it should go in easy. If it doesn't go in easy, you have to be real careful not to cross thread. But then when you tighten it up, you tighten it up and you feel for a little bit of a squish. That's, that's necessary to make sure the ferrule is really tight in there. So let's imagine that we've got all the the, the tubes disconnected. So then there's two ways to get the valve head out. The first way is somewhat easier because there, there's two two screws. Now this is a this is a, a five a seven sixty fourths hex wrench. Seven sixty fourths. You really should use American sizes. I know that's inconvenient in a lot of the world to find American size wrenches, but there's no it's not good to use a metric because if you strip the, the hex wrench, then you're kind of out of luck. So this screw holds the thermocouple. See, the, these valves are heated to a certain temperature, and this is the thermocouple that senses the temperature of the valve. So be real careful to put that back at the end because if, if you leave the thermocouple disconnected, then it's just going to heat and heat and heat. So I'm going to remove okay, this one's really tight. That's a little tighter than it really needs to be. So having removed the two screws, this valve, this, this whole valve head, you can see it's, it's free. So if we weren't connected with the 10 little tubes, I could just as easily pull that out just like that. So when we put it back, tighten that one up not quite as tight as it was. And then this one with the thermocouple, 
put that back. And tight, but not, not death tight doesn't have to be. Okay, so that's one way to get the valve head out, is to, is to take those two screws out. But sometimes, the valve head comes, though, with a shaft like this, and there's a, a drive shaft in here, and sometimes the problem with the valve has to do with this drive shaft. So if that's the case, then really the whole valve head, not just the top of the valve head, needs to be removed. So the way this works is the shaft of the valve is connected to a motor. The motor is below here, so the shaft goes down into the motor, and the shaft is secured by something called a collet, C-O-L-L-E-T. And it's really like a coll or in that it's a little piece of, of circular metal that has a split in there. And when, when you tighten the collar, so you tighten the collar, and that grips the shaft of the valve. All right. So it squeezes it down, and of course the collar is, is screwed to the, the GC, so that's what secures this in place. So to get access to that screw, you have to come in from the side. Now here, the, the AFP size nut is different than the Valco size nut, so the AFP size nut is a um, 532nd, and the Valco size is 964. Usually when you buy these hex wrenches, they come in a set. Look, the set looks something like this, so you have a bunch of different sizes. And they need to be long enough that you can reach in there. So, so I'm gonna see if we can get a, a view of, of how this looks. See the, the, the hex wrench is going and, and into that nut. So you loosen that nut, and then the whole valve head can come out in, along with the shaft of the valve. So I think that's really the story on removing and replacing valve heads.